Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer on Thursday the 19th of August. My, my, isn't the year flying past? So, as we reflect on the passage of time and the events of recent days and weeks and bring it all together and present it before our God in prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse and a branch shall grow out from his roots and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid the calf, the lion and the fatling together with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Psalm 94 The Lord is a God who avenges, a God who avenges, shine forth. Rise up, judge of the earth, pay back to the proud what they deserve. How long, Lord, will the wicked, how long will the wicked be jubilant? They pour out arrogant words, all evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, Lord, they oppress your inheritance. They slay the widow and the foreigner, they murder the fatherless. They say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. Take notice, you senseless ones among the people. You fools, when will you become wise? Does he who fashioned the ear not hear? Does he who formed the eye not see? Does he who disciplines nations not punish? Does he who teaches mankind lack knowledge? The Lord knows all human plans. He knows that they are futile. Blessed is the one you discipline, Lord, the one you teach from your law. You grant them relief from days of trouble, till a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not reject his people. He will never forsake his inheritance. Judgment will again be founded on righteousness, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evildoers? Unless the Lord had given me help, I would soon have dwelt in the silence of death. When I said my foot is slipping, your unfailing Lord, love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. 
Can a corrupt throne be allied with you, a throne that brings on misery by its decrees? The wicked band together against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my fortress, and my God the rock in whom I will take refuge. He will repay them for their sins and destroy them for their wickedness. The Lord our God will destroy them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. To Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 to 17. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. But that night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites out up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling, wherever I have moved with all the Israelites. Did I ever say to any of them, any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them any more, as they did at the beginning, and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. When your days are over and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish his throne, the throne of his kingdom, forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him. As I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you, your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Acts chapter 7 verses 44 to 53 Our ancestors had the tabernacle of the covenant law with them in the wilderness. It had been made as God directed Moses according to the pattern he had seen. After receiving the tabernacle, our ancestors under Joshua brought it with them when they took the land from the nations God drove out before them. It remained in the land until the time of David, 
who enjoyed God's favour and asked that he might provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Sorry, got caught on a trap there. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the, to the Father, Father and, and to the, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and, and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled so the, the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. Father, in a day interspersed with sunshine and rain, we look at a world and its goings on that have been interspersed with joy and tears. Father, we thank you for the day and the blessings that it has held thus far. And we bring before you the situations for the failings, for the weaknesses and the wrongs of all that has happened in our lives and in the lives of this world this day. Father, we thank you that you give us life in abundance and you give us choice. And we pray that you would help us to make those choices the right choices in all things we do. Lord, in your mercy, 
Father, we pray for the unfolding situation on Capitol Hill in the United States as a, a man claims to have an active bomb in a vehicle parked near the Congress building. Lord, we pray that the negotiators who are active there would be given wisdom, patience and courage. Father, that that situation would be brought to a peaceful resolution without harm. Lord, we pray for those people who, for whatever reason, because of confused thinking, because of frustration and desperation, make threats or carry out threats of violence against, against society generally. Lord, we pray for the United States, which is a country that is still very divided, still very hurt, still torn apart by lies and propaganda. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for the healing of those wounds, that the truth will prevail, and that good and right governance will, will be the, the outworking. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our oh, prayer. Father, as our government continues to pronounce that the Taliban have never been our enemy, as it continues to accentuate the positives of the relationship that we have with the Taliban at this time in Afghanistan. Mm. Father, the words of our governments and our senior military officials appear to be somewhat at odds with the views that were held in the 20 years that the coalition forces found themselves engaged in Afghanistan and Iraq. And as people say, oh no, it's a new body, we're now a new changed and friendly bunch. The news coming out of Afghanistan, the news coming out of those in military circles seem to indicate that perhaps the views of government and senior military in post now seem to be slightly out of skew with the realities. Father, we pray for integrity in leadership, integrity in planning and strategy and as we cheered yesterday at the news that 20,000 Afghans were to be given asylum and safety in this country only to find that that was 5,000 a year. But we pray for the 15,000 who will find somewhere to hide for the next three years if they're in the last tranche. Father, the world is led by strange and worrying forces it seems as the old complaint of world war one that lions were led by donkeys 
it seems now the donkeys are leading another bunch of people. So we pray for the governments of the world. We pray for the peace of the world. And we pray for integrity and honesty in every government body. Lord, heal this broken world of ours, we pray. Bring your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the situation in Haiti, where five days after the earthquake, people are still waiting for help. Over 2,000 people known to have died. The heavy rains have exacerbated the desperate situation. Lord, we pray for your mercy upon this country, which has already suffered so much after the earthquake in 2010, which was already a very poor country before that. Lord, we pray that the global powers of this world, those who have the resources to help, would put them at the disposal of Haiti, help this country to rebuild. Lord, we pray that you would work through people on the ground mm. to bring healing and wholeness and help. We thank you for the volunteers who go into places after disasters like this and give their time and energy to help in practical ways. We pray that more people would hear that call and answer it. And Father, for those of us who can't go, may we find other ways to help, maybe by donating money, certainly by praying, but by also keeping the plight of these people alive, keeping it in our prayers, keeping it in our thoughts, keeping it in our conversations, that this story would not be allowed to just fall off our news feeds as it did last time there was an earthquake. Lord, inspire us and help us to work for the good of all people on this earth. To not just look out for ourselves and our loved ones and our nearest neighbours, but to be concerned with those who live in very different circumstances through no fault of their own to see them as our brothers and sisters, as our family and loved ones, to pray for them and to act on their behalf as we would for our own families. Mm. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for those known to us, those situations known to us, for the people, the places, the situations, the things that cause us concern this day. We lift to you the people in our families and our hearts 
and homes. Beginning at home, we list to you those who are further afield and perhaps known only to us three youths. Finishing with the the people and the places and their needs. So Lord, as we come into a moment of stillness, touch our hearts that we might pray intelligently, that we might pray in union with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price, through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done, done on earth as, as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins, as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us, us not into, into temptation, but, but deliver us from, from evil. evil. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us and wherever you are, whenever you are. Pray that you would continue to know God's blessing and presence with you mm. and to share that presence with those around you. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye.